we finally got a decent day here in the UK. <laughs> it makes a change, I can tell you. But today, I'm going to try connecting this to this. So this is the DJI Neo, and this is an iPhone, but it could be any phone. I've uh, downloaded the app to it, to connect it to it. So let's have a go and see what happens. So the first thing I need to do is turn this on. Now, be careful with this because what I've done in the past is I've had my fingers I threw the propeller guard and uh, it won't start. Anyway, it doesn't chop your finger off, but don't try it. I've already tried it for you. So to turn it on, it's just a single press and then a press and hold and it should burst into life. There you go, and the propellers are going. Right. I love it when it does that reassuring noise. Well, the next thing we need to do is connect the DJI Fly app to it. And obviously we need to connect. So it's already shown up there. I'm recording the screen, so it'll take a little while for it to connect. It doesn't always do it first time, mind you. There we go. See how long it takes. There we go, we're ready. There's your screen. So previously we've just flown the drone just using the uh, control buttons on the front there, the autonomous mode. But this time we're going to try it with this phone. So we've already got it set up, so let's see what we can do better with this than we can just do with the buttons on its own. First thing I'm going to do is just take off. It's on direction track, so I, I don't know what the difference is between doing the uh, quick shots using the phone as opposed to just using the button on the front there. You can change the parameters, so let's see if it takes off anywhere. It's looking at me. Unable to take off. Aircraft in motion. And that was because I had my finger going through, like I just mentioned. Three, Try again. Two, one. There we go. Right, let's see what it does. So I can see that it's actually following me and I can see on screen see what it does when I turn around <laughs> and this camera's still following me so you did well right okay let's land it didn't really come back to me so what I was saying was you can change the parameters inside of the app so we've got it it's on direction track as you can see so let's go into settings So I had it on uh, medium follow distance. I could have had it on close. I could have had it on far away. So you can also have it fly in either low, flat or high. So there's something it can do different on the phone that you can't do on the drone itself. One. Yep, it's moving further away and it's moving higher, a little bit higher. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. Right, let's have a go, see what it does. Yep, it's following me. Have I got a bald spot there? I don't think I have. <laughs> so I've pressed stop. Now is it just going to come back to me, he wonders, if I stand still? It doesn't appear to, does it? It looks like it's just stopping there. I put my hand out. It is watching me. It knows I've put my hand out. Or does I have to go and stand underneath it? <laughs> right, I have found a little bit of a problem with it, so I've pressed stop and it's just hovering in the air there. But it's not coming back to me. Now I thought it would have just come straight back to me. Are you going to come back? <laughs> and with me being short, I've got it set on the high setting. And it, it's not coming down. I can't reach it. Look. Right, don't know what to do. Do I have to wait for the battery to run out so it just lands itself? Or can I take control of it using this? Let's have a look. Now I can press land. You have to press it all. Landing. But to me, that's a bit of a flaw, isn't it? Right, so a few different things that we can do as well on here is, so obviously you can see the different controls we've got there. So we had manual setting, which I'm gonna go into a minute. So we can actually go in and change all the parameters. So in the drony, we can change it to uh, flat or rise. We can change the amount of height. We can change the height there. So let's pick the circle. So we've got it on six meters. We can change it to four, two. 
and right up to 20 metres there. You know, in diff different things altogether. And in custom, we do have different things that we can pick as well. So we've got the helix, the boomerang, and the directional track as well. So we, I've, I've got to set on direction track because that's the, the one that I'm interested in. That's all well and good. You can go in and change the parameters. So I've showed you how to do that. But I think the main thing I'm interested in is actually trying to fly the drone manually. So let's have a go at that one. So we have to click on the manual control center and then you have to press take off. And then it'll give you the controls on screen like a, re like a proper remote control. So right, let's take off. I love it pointing me because it does seem to like doing that. So you have to press and hold it like this. It's gonna take, take off. off. And take now, off. as you can see, we have manual control. Hopefully, so. Let's go up. It's definitely going up. And as you can see there, we have the sea in the background just over there. I was gonna go and do this on the beach, but the tide's up, so we couldn't do that. So we do have manual control, as you can see. Let's uh, bring it down again. It's a bit weird using this. It's a wee bit slow, isn't it? It is working. I'm going to try flying it in the long line down there. Now I have been told that you can only fly about 50 metres away because it's only connected using the Wi-Fi. Now you do have a, you do have some kind of gauge on there which tells you how much you're connected and this says it's full connection. So let's have a fly down that way and see how far it manages to go. Alright here we go, I'll fly as fast as I can go. Can you see how slow it is? I mean it is fun and it is some control. It's pretty slow, isn't it? It's still working that far away. I suppose, mm, I don't know how far 50 metres is. Ah, it's telling me there now. If you have a look there, you can see that it's actually losing signal. So that's about as far as it can go. And does it actually tell you how far away it is? It doesn't, it doesn't really. So you don't have anywhere near the same amount of control as you would using a remote control, a proper remote control, which we will be using next but in a different video. There's one thing you really do have to take into account when you're using your phone as a remote controller. There is no return to home on it. So if you're flying this out at sea or over a cliff or something and your battery goes, you cannot get it back home. It's a way, or you lose signal for instance, if because you've only got 50 meters or so on the Wi-Fi. So that's one big reason why the re proper remote controller might be better. It is coming back. It's very slow though. And will it just land in me on? Landing. There you go. I mean, yeah, it's okay, isn't it? But a bit of fun. Uh, if you haven't got a remote controller, yes, you could use this, but you can't really use it as a drone. I know I didn't really buy it to use it as a proper drone. I've got a couple of mini drones there that I would use. Uh, if I really wanted to do some drone work, it's more for fun and uh, for vlogging really, uh, so it'll follow me about. So to sum it up, is it any good? Yeah, it's okay. Like I said, you can change all the parameters of the different quick shots or the tricks, as I like to call them. Yes, you can fly it using the manual controls, but only to a very limited degree. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Let's see what it's like using the remote proper remote control and let's see what difference we've got a lot i'm going to say so if you've enjoyed it give us a thumbs up and ring the bell and subscribe and all that carry on it would be really much appreciated it really helps us along and uh, we'll catch you next time when we're going to use the remote control bye bye now